Hey, welcome back. Today I want to, to do some carbide machining. Not machining something with carbide, but machining carbide with something. <laughs> um, these are two old carbide end mills uh, that have their shank reduced in diameter back here. This is just this is just R and D and me me fooling around. Um, and this is not ground, this is turned on my lathe with a CBN insert. But hey man, you can't machine carbide on a hobby machine. Oh yeah, you can. <laughs> so to give you a little bit of context, carbide machining is nothing new. Um, or it is relatively new, but it's, it's, it's getting more and more common. At work we do some some carbide machining, we drill and thread mill into carbide. On we have a we have a pretty high end milling machine from a German manufacturer, and we do carbide machining on that with diamond coated tooling. It works really well. The threads we get out of it look really crazy good, like like a ground finish. And if you if you go on the internet and look up Kern, uh, Kern, normal the common common knowledge is that you use uh, diamond or diamond coated carbide on machining carbide because it's harder than the carbide. But uh, CBN cubic boron nitride is also harder than carbide. It's way softer than diamond. But it's still harder than, than carbide. And to be honest, I didn't believe that you can machine carbide that way. Uh, I even wrote one or do, one day ago on a German forum that CBN is too soft to cut carbide. But then somebody proved me wrong. He showed he showed a, also a shank of carbide end mill. And he w he was able to make some scratches into it with the with the CBN insert. Let's say it that way. Uh, didn't look didn't look awesome, but the the insert he used was badly chipped. So I went in the shop. I took a CBN insert. I I reground it as I usually do without an edge prep, so it has a sharp edge, sharp cutting edge. And I did some test cuts, and uh, lo and behold, it works. Uh, doesn't hold up very long. And uh, the carbide dust is nasty as can be, or the carbide chips in this case. But it works. So let's go to the machine and, and do some, some carbide machining. CBN insert, uh, carbide end mill, shank of a carbide end mill. If you want to look it up, it's a 202370 on on um, in the Hoffman Group online shop. So it's really a solid carbide end mill. We're running a thousand RPM and a feed of 0.03 millimeters, uh, 30 microns per revolution. So let's see. And we're not going to take the interrupted cut. Uh, that's bad enough on on hard turning, but on machining carbide, I'm eh, not sure. Depth of cut is 0.1 millimeter. Um, diameter reduction is 0.1 millimeter. Depth of cut is 0.05, 50 microns. Okay, first cut. Finish doesn't look too shabby. Uh, the sound cuts, this, the, the cut sounds really nice. Um, it's, it's, it's really impressive. Now let's go down to 9.8. And now I will just go down in 0.1 millimeter diameter increments until I see 
that the insert is not taking a cut anymore. And then multiply the number of cuts I took by the length of cut. This is 13 millimeter. And then I get an idea how well or how long this insert lasts. Okay, I took, oh it's hot, um, I took 10 cuts at 1 millimeter diameter reduction. We should be down to roughly 9 millimeter, which I doubt because wear and tool pressure. So let's check the diameter. <laughs> yeah, it's 9.2. And I can, can see on DRO by the deflection I get in the, in the, in the cross slide that the insert is getting duller and duller. So let's try a little bit deeper depth of cut without regrinding the insert. While we're busting this one up, we can do it properly too. Uh, let's take a depth of cut of 15, 150 microns. Uh, that's 0.3 millimeters in diameter. And by the way, during the machining, I wear a dust mask. And later I will have to take the chuck here apart because uh, when I started I didn't think about it and now I got the carbide dust in it all over the place. The ways of the lathe are covered um, and also the, the cross slide is completely covered but I still added some shop towel to catch most of the carbide chips down here. And yes, it's chips. I will, I will take some over to the microscope later and show you. I think 0.3 millimeter diameter reduction is really pushing it on my machine. I can hear the, the insert squeak a little bit and I think that's the limit. Yeah, it cuts but it's not happy. Doesn't doesn't really could also be the insert that's gone now. What I really wanted to show that you can actually machine carbide w with CBN, as you just have seen. Um, at work we drill and thread mill into solid carbide, but those tools are diamond coated. Uh, CBN is considered softer than diamond, but it's, it's still barely taking a cut in, in this material. But definitely doesn't last as long as a diamond tool. But still, we get out, out of a, a diamond coated drill and thread mill, we get about uh, 15 holes in carbide before they show wear and the thread is not, not a gauge fit anymore. So let's take this end mill out of the chuck. As you can see, it's really an end mill. And by the shine on the shank, you can tell that it's a carbide end mill. And also, by the way, it, fr it fractured on the end here when I crashed it. So yes, this is carbide. And no, the shank material 
and the cutting portion on a, on a carbide anvil that small is not different material. They are ground from one chunk of carbide. So I took 10 cuts on this OD with a 50 micron depth of cut. Length of cut is 13 millimeters. So we, we cut the length in total of about 130 millimeters before the insert didn't really cut that well anymore. Uh, I'm not sure if, if, if that's good or bad, but it's at least an idea how long the insert will last when you cut something nasty like, like carbide. And yes, when I say carbide, I mean sintered tungsten carbide, of course. So yeah, that, that's, that's the idea. I just wanted to see how long it lasts and uh, the, the, the kind of wear we get on the insert. We'll get to that in a second when we look under the microscope. So that's, that's this. Let, let's look at the surface here under the microscope and at the chips and the insert. We're under the microscope at about uh, 10x magnification. Uh, here is the cylindrical ground or centerless ground diameter of the end mill. You still can see the laser engraving on here. And here's the surface finish I get from um, turning with a CPN insert on an Emco hobby lathe. The turned surface is of course significant worse than a proper centerless ground surface, especially uh, these tool shanks have an exceptional good finish. But still, you can see that the finish is not terrible bad. What's bad is the chipping here on the corner. That's when I came in with the, with the tool, then I pulled out like you would normally do when you machine steel to clean up the face here. And in that moment, it chipped, I think. That's, that's my theory. Or it chipped already when I took the cut in here. Uh, that's something a CNC machine could do way more controlled. It could do a nice lead out or a radius of what, or whatever to prevent this crazy chipping here. And out here, you see my attempt at a, at a bigger depth of cut, which also worked, but I didn't feel like pushing my machine too much. Uh, this is still carbide. So let's zoom in a little bit and take a closer look at the finish here. Uh, that's about 40 times the magnification and my wooden poker here is very big. Um, you see a large, large, large number of vertical lines which are all, all basically the same distance to each other. And that's our feet per revolution that we ran the machine at. Um, each line is, is 30 microns to the next line. And that's how this, this, this uh, finish gets about. But you can also see this, it has a lot of tiny speckles or dots in it. That's almost, it, to me it looks like, um, a little bit like, like cast iron under the microscope. Like a piece of, of carbide get broken out of the, out of the, um, out of the matrix of, of small particle that's, that's glued together to be carbide. And I guess that's what we're seeing here, those, those tiny, tiny speckles. This microscope doesn't do more than 40x. I, I would need more magnification to say more, but that's my theory. <laughs> On the ground finish, that's the ground finish. Uh, here we don't get that. Uh, there is the chipped area. There is back to the uh, turned, turned finish. Does this look like dust to you? This is at 10x. Um, without magnification to the naked eye, it looks like dust. But under here, under the microscope, uh, not so much anymore. Let's go to 40x. You can say what you want to me. To me, these are tiny chips. 
they are they look like a, a like a miniature cast iron ship basically it's really crazy and yes they are magnetic a little bit magnetic uh, not sure where that comes from carbide is magnetic but way less than steel but over here yeah there is a big one so yes it makes chips here is the CBN insert uh, this large area that's missing here that's where I reground this insert numerous times um, the cutting edge down here is really down here but you can see that there is a tiny chip and when we zoom in that's the tip of, of the CBN insert and you see that it's fractured it, it's really it has lost a lot of its shape um, one reason might be that I reground this insert with a fairly coarse diamond wheel you can see the grinding marks going from left to right or right or right to left and those are like tiny stress risers because they are so coarse this was done with a D125 diamond wheel that probably um, helps chance of fracturing the, uh, the, the CBN a lot this is not this is not classic uh, wear where the material is abraded away this is really chipped away so I'm not sure what to take from this but uh, yeah <laughs> I, will, I will just leave I will just leave this here like it is that said thank you all for watching I hope you not sure if you really should learn something from this video I hope you enjoyed thank you all for watching and see you next time